So in this video, we're going to talk about the MOSFET uh, four terminal structure or three terminal structure, depending on whether you consider the body a terminal. And we're going to start off by saying that what we want in a lot of applications uh, and what the MOSFET was uh, has been used for is an electronic switch. So this is one of the major uh, major uses of a MOSFET. So when we apply some voltage, say uh, V on, this switch closes and the MOSFET just acts like a wire. So how do we actually do that? Well, uh, we know how to create an open switch. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but we know one structure that doesn't conduct electricity is a reverse biased diode. So if we've got this p-type substrate, let's say we've got a, a p-type semiconductor, and we've got these two n-plus regions. So that just means very heavily doped n-type regions. They don't need to be n-plus. They can just be n. It doesn't really matter for these purposes. But we'll, when, there's no, um, when there's no voltage applied, so say this v is equal to 0, and this v is equal to 0, then we get a depletion region formed around these n plus regions and no electrons. So this, this depletion region contains negatively charged acceptors as this is a p type region and very little of the depletion region is going to extend into the n plus region because it's very heavily doped. So there's this depletion region that's blocking these electrons in the n plus regions from getting to each other. So in this case, this is the this is our switch. So this is an open switch because these depletion regions are preventing the electrons from getting to each other. But what if uh, what if we were able to somehow make it so there's a bunch of electrons all throughout this p-type region. What if we could form a channel of electrons and what if we could form this channel by applying a voltage somewhere? Does, we, we don't know where it is, but what if we could create this channel uh, by applying a voltage? And indeed that's exactly what a MOSFET lets us do. That's exactly what we've been learning over the last few videos. Um, that's what we need a gate for. So we know if we apply a positive voltage VG to this metal, uh, and this is an oxide, if we apply a positive enough voltage to this VG, we'll have this depletion region near the edge initially, so some of these are uh, immobile ions, but we'll get a bunch of electrons that will form this channel. And if we allow our metal and our oxide to extend just a little bit, so just a little bit over on either side, on either of these N plus regions, then we'll have a continuous channel of electrons. That's, that's supposed to be an N. A continuous channel of electrons. And so we've created a switch. Uh, we have a structure, this MOS structure, uh, or MOS capacitor structure, where when we apply a voltage, we form this conducting channel between two terminals. Now, if we want to actually conduct electricity, then we'll need to apply a voltage here. So let's say we apply, uh, let's say that this is this voltage is V equals zero, and this voltage is say, I don't know, V equals one volt. Then we've got a positive voltage between these two terminals and an electric field pointing in that direction. Let me just erase this uh, this guy. So since we've got a, a positive electric field or an electric field pointing to the left, these electrons are going to start to migrate. So these electrons are going to start to move towards uh, from from one direction towards the other. And this electric field is within the semiconductor. So let me just redraw this. 
so it's perhaps less confusing. These electrons, in the presence of an electric field, so the electric field is pointing in this direction, in the presence of this electric field, these electrons are going to move to the right. So we're going to get a flow of current from the left-hand side to the right. So we're going to have a source of electrons, uh, and we call this terminal the source. They're going to be moving towards uh, what we call the drain. And so this is our closed switch. So this is this source is at plus zero volts, and this drain is at say plus one volt. Now it's notice it's not a perfect switch. So it's not a perfect switch. Perfect, I can spell. Uh, it's not a perfect switch because we do need to apply this small voltage across these terminals to uh, to get electrons to flow. And depending on the, the gate voltage that we apply VG, uh, this voltage might be lower or higher. Uh, and we'll go over that later. But we've we've essentially created a, a switch. We, we allow electrons only to flow when this gate voltage is applied. When electrons don't flow, we've got this continuous depletion region all throughout both the source and drain regions and uh, potentially this region directly under the gate because we've also got um, we've got the intrin the band bending that's intrinsic to the structure and so this is the MOS structure this is the MOS three terminal structure and uh, we sometimes you'll hear it as a, you'll hear it said being a four terminal structure. And that's because really it is, uh, because we do have a fourth terminal here, and that's the body. So what is this? What is this p-type semiconductor? This bulk or this body, the majority of the semiconductor. What is that connected to? And typically, for an NMOS transistor like this, with with a p-type body, we connect the body to ground, just because that that makes us not have to worry about hardly anything at all. Um, sometimes we'll, we will have to worry about what the body is connected to. And indeed, in the next video, uh, we're going to discuss the body effect. So what happens when this body voltage, uh, VB, is not equal to zero? What, what happens then uh, with this overall, with this full structure? Uh, and so that's, that's what we're going to be going over in the next video. But this is sort of the conceptual foundation for what a three terminal or four terminal MOSFET structure is, uh, why, why we might want one and what it's, what it's useful for. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.